Hi, I'm Diane Andre, and I'm here today to teach you some of the keys to the technique of the Alexander process. Now, one of the things I'll be doing is taking you step by step, and I'm going to be picking just a couple of things I really want you concentrating on in this picture. One of the biggest things we're going to be playing with is color, color and technique. Okay, we're going to bring, start bringing some sunshine. We're going to move from light to a medium light into a dark, really plain value of color. And, as, and some mountain techniques. And that's what I want you to concentrate on. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my colors here in the beginning so that you'll know what we'll be working with. I'll be working with some titanium white, some Indian yellow, and this we'll call my number one mix, which is a alizarin crimson with just a touch of sap green, some Prussian blue, and this here is a gray mix, which is equal parts of alizarin crimson and phthalo green. And I also have some sap green. Okay, now we'll start by presenting. We've already presented the magic white to the canvas. It's already tinted, and be sure you cover all your canvas when you're working with that. Now, one of the biggest things I want you to learn when you're priming your canvas with the magic white is how to get it on perfect. So once you have it on, I want you to test that by tapping your finger against the canvas. And notice the fingerprint. There's a nice fingerprint full of paint, but it's not gooey on there. It's pretty dry canvas. So let's tint color. Now I take my two and a half inch brush and I just touch the color in there. I'm going to start with my Indian yellow with a touch of color and I'm going to come up in here with a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure, move that yellow into the white. As you can see what's happening here with that white on there, I have all these different values working for me with just a few strokes in there. So the key to tints is a little bit of paint, a lot of pressure. Look at the movement of that brush. A lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. Mix it in with the white. It's mixing on my canvas. I don't have to mix all that ahead of time. Okay, clean and dry that brush. Now at the bottom of this can I have a little screen and I'm pulling that brush across the screen so that it allows the paint to pull out of that brush, shake it out, dry it up, and I'm all set to go. Be sure you dry that brush. Okay, let's take that first mix I gave you. Remember, it's lizard crimson with just a touch of sap green, a little bit of paint on my brush. And I'm going to move it into the yellow a little bit. What I want you concentrating on, though, is the pressure I'm putting on this brush. Remember, I'm going to teach you the keys to mastering this technique. A little bit of paint and a lot of pressure. Mix it in with that yellow a little bit. Up in through here. A lot of pressure. Move it down, move it down, move it down. Okay, a little bit of paint, a lot of pressure. Now, let's go into that second mix I gave you, which is equal parts of alizarin crimson and phthalo green. Touch of paint, a lot of pressure on a real gray color over in here. Isn't that a nice gray? I'm really toning my color down in this particular painting. I'm not using, like, I could have used straight alizarin, but I wanted a little more grayer. So I added green, like so. A lot of pressure. Uh, growl it in there. The darker you want it, the, it's the amount of pressure you use, not the amount of paint you put on your canvas. Bring a little bit of that in here into nowhere. Okay. Now, at the same time, you can take a clean, dry brush. Let's, I changed my mind here a little bit. We're going to throw some water down in the bottom. So I just want you to pick up, I want to show you tints. Tints, this is important. Your tints are important. A little paint, a lot of pressure. Move it in there. Take the other second color, a little bit of that pink color we mixed, and work it in there. Remember, your water is like a reflection. Today, all it's going to be reflecting is the sky, so we'll take our sky colors and move it in there. And we'll take a clean, dry brush. I'm sneaky. I keep uh, two or three of these brushes, so I don't always have to keep cleaning them. Gives me more time to paint. Move a little bit of that in there. 
and a little on this side just to show some reflection of, of color like a so okay clean dry brush clean dry brush now remember when I was saying all I wanted you to see here was tints the purpose for that is because we're going to play up a lot of cloud movement and that's one of the biggest things I want you to learn today is the load of this brush and the movement of this brush so that you can have those beautiful clouds at any time. I'm not going to concentrate on the painting so much as the technique. Pull your brush both sides like so. Always load your brush this way when you're using it. Titanium white and a touch of Indian yellow. Now what, what I want you to watch is the movement of this brush. Look at that. I'm letting it bounce all over that canvas. Bounce it in there. Growl it in. If I painted the picture or tried to paint a cloud, all I'm going to get is this. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Look at that. I wore it out. So watch the brush. Watch the brush. Titanium white, touch of Indian yellow. Work it in there. Now watch. I'll do the slow motion. Hit. A lot of pressure. Hit. Bounce. Bounce. Look at the bristles. Move. Move the bristles around. Like so. Maybe at the bottom you can lightly touch to blend that out a little bit. Lightly touch where you don't want it to show a line. Like so. See the movement we're getting in there? Play of light. Okay, do it again. Touch of Indian yellow, titanium white. Uh -huh. Look at the authority. Look how I'm holding this brush. I'm holding it real close to the bristles. So when I hit the canvas, it's going to bounce for me. I've got a lot of authority, a lot of pressure. Move it around, move it around. Let it bounce. Now the beauty of this is that I have a stiff bristle fan brush. And this paint is extremely thick. So all I have to do is let the brush and the paint do the work for me. All I have to do is just know that I'm going to be loose and let it play. Let it play, let it play. Oh, what a gorgeous day to paint. I love when I can come outside like this and paint. Okay, same thing. I want you to take some titanium white. A touch of that red mix. Just a touch, a little touch will do you. Come back up in here. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, get some authority. This is how it has a little pink in it. I'm going to show a little pink moving up in here. Little pink, look at the play of color. Look at those clouds starting to come out for me. Move it in, move it around. Maybe bounce something up in there. Back in and around. Don't get so hung up on it has to be like so. That's when you start make, try, trying to make a stroke. Remember, the Alexander technique was designed so every stroke was perfect, no matter how it looks. Da 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 da. Growl it in there. Growl it in there. Doesn't matter. Just get some movement. Get some movement. Oh, a little hair there. Go flip that off. Dun, 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 dun. Like so. Down into nowhere. Down into nowhere. A little more play of light up in through here. A little more play. You know, some of the, these keys that I will be showing you in certain different paintings, and each painting will be concentrated on a couple. Those are the keys to mastering the technique. You know, a lot of my students have said, well, gee, you know, show me that again, show me that again. Slow, show me in slow motion so I can see that. So we really need to concentrate not so much on the painting, but certain things that are going on. Look at that. Look at the pull of that paint. Just let it happen. Down into shadow. <coughs> Down into shadow. A little bit more of that, and we're ready to go. A little more pink up in here. Not so much in the dark. Not so much in the dark. Look at the movement. Relax. If you get too tense, what I want you to do is just turn away from the canvas and just start hitting it wherever the paint goes 
That's great. Okay? Okay. Now, if I was to look at this painting when I'm through, and I really want you to keep this in mind, I wouldn't come back up in here and it would not look the same if I painted it a hundred times. Because creative, when you're into your creative powers, you want that looseness, the effect of something new, even with color. I try not to concentrate too much on color because I want the freedom to whatever it is, it's perfect. No matter what color I go for, it's perfect. And that's where I, where I want you. I want you to just da -da, get into the creativity part of it. Not so much the technique. Okay, like so, okay? The technique and the creativity go together, hand in hand. Everything else is up to you. Now, big key, clean, dry brush. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the canvas. I'm going to hypnotize, okay? Hypnotize meaning I use a very light touch. I'll do this slow motion so you can see that. Just a few hairs are hitting that canvas. Just a few hairs. Very soft. Look at that slow motion. Slow motion. Look at how it's softening that up. This brush was made to open up the way I want it to so I get that nice blend. Look at that. Nice, nice blend. Just a few hairs. Okay. Pick up the speed a little bit. Look at the blend though. Look at this part of the canvas compared to this part of the canvas. I have a lot more it's more subdued over in here, a little more rough. And because that paint is so thick, it stays right where I put it. So when I gently blend it, it sticks, it stays, it stays and sticks. Okay, a little more movement up in here. There we go. Now, with, look at that. Look at the values and the color from light. Look at that punch of light right over into the dark. And that's what you're looking for. Okay, let's do one of those mighty mountains. Key. This is another one of the biggest things I want to teach you in this lesson. is how to load this knife and how to use it. I'm going to take that second color I mixed, which is equal parts of alizarin crimson and phthalo green. Now watch. I'm going to pull my paint flat on my palette. And every time I load this, every time I load my knife, I pull it flat on my palette. Let me clean this off so you can see this. Now in a straight upper position, I slice through the paint, pulling it a little bit towards me. Okay? Now look at that nice load of paint. Okay, see how that texture of that paint stands up away from the knife so that when I come up to the canvas, I can get it to do exactly what I want it to do. Okay, now watch the pressure I use on this. And I'm pulling the knife to my left and scraping as I go along. To my left, scraping as it goes, goes along. Da -da -da. Look at that, scrape off the excess. Scrape off the excess. Fill it in. Okay, remember, let me show you that one more time here. Pull the paint, straight up position, slice it in there. You got a nice lift of paint, and you're ready to go. Okay, now watch the knife though. Look at this, look at the knife. Look how it's coming off from the corner of that knife. Look at the corner of that knife. I'll do that slow so you can see it. The corner of the knife. And just fill it in a little bit down here. Fill it in, fill it in, fill it in. Like so. Let's put a little guy right up in here. These mountains are close. Close to me, so I kept the base color very dark very dark now we're going to take and be sure we take and take off all the excess paint all the excess paint and you what you can see here and this is where most of my students always have a problem when they go back and they're painting on their paintings when you're close up on this what you can see is you can get, see scrape marks in the canvas don't try to get rid of those if you do you're laying on paint, and you do not want a buildup of paint. You don't want any... Look, I can even take my knife and go straight across there and not pick up any excess paint. The purpose for that is, is when I take a clean, dry brush, and I'm going to... I'll do this slow. A couple of hairs are touching the dark underneath, and the rest of it is t picking up the magic white underneath. 
Okay, slow motion. A few hairs are touching. The rest of it's picking up the magic. Give it some pressure, and you get an automatic blend. Automatic blend. Pull that down a little bit there. Automatic blend. You got some nice little fog rolling in there. And it's working with that magic white underneath. The beauty of that magic white is so that you're not having to create the mist. You know, let it happen. The only thing you need to concentrate on is how to use the brush, how much pressure is she putting on that brush, and what's happening. Remember, a few hairs are touching the dark, and the rest of it's picking up the magic underneath, and you create the illusion of fog, like so. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's take and put some highlights on those mountains. Now, I'm going to play the color we've used up here on the mountains also. I want to carry it through into the mountains. So what I've done is I've taken that red mix that I gave you, and I've made two values. Value meaning take a color and add white. And as you can see, I added less white to this one. This is white with just a touch of that color. Now this is for my sunny side of the mountain. Now on the shadow side, I took the number two color, added a little bit of Prussian blue, and made two values, a medium and a light. Now again, let's take that low to that paint, this is where that, that low to that paint comes in so nicely. You have that lift of paint. Now what's happening is I'm gently, 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 gently touching that mountain underneath. And that load of paint is pulling itself off of the knife for me. Okay? Look at this, no pressure. Just guide it down. It almost falling out of my hand, pulling in, pulling in. Gentle, gentle, gentle. If I push that, look, let me show you. If I push this, this is exactly what I'm going to get. Okay? You don't want that. You want those breaks. You want to show those crevices, those crannies, and then the people will say, oh, she painted. It took her so long to get all those breaks in there. No, let the paint, the paint and the knife do the work for you. Let it happen for you. This technique was designed to let it happen for the artist. Let it happen. Look at the break. Ah, okay. No pressure. No pressure. All you need to know is how to hold the knife. No pressure. Easy does it. Okay. Light touch. Look at the, how I'm holding this knife, too. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Let it happen. Okay, let's pick up a little lighter of that value and just in a few places hit here and here. I'm going to show you in this particular mountain how to layer your paint. Because this paint is so extremely thick, you can do those kind of fun things. Da 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 da. Look at the pull. Look at the pull. Little highlights, little highlights. Even in shadow, we'll give it a little highlight. Little shadow, give it some highlight. Da 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 da. Da da da. Let all those colors show through. Da da da. Like this, like this, let it pull. Look at that. Oh, look at that break. Ah, ah, ah. Da, 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 da. Right down, let it pull. Look at the move, look at the depth you get in the break of that within the seconds. Okay, now clean that knife because now we're going to go into your, your sunny side of the mountain. I'm going to take a pink color. Load the knife, get the break of that, the lift of that paint. Come up in here, and we're going to add a pinkish color. A pinkish color. Remember, this is your first color, first step on here. It'll be a little bright until you add the colors over it. Look at the break, though. Let's not concentrate so much on the color. Let's concentrate on the technique. Look at that. I'm doing this slow motion because I know you're out there painting along with me, huh? Yeah? Good, good, good. Look at the breaks. I want to teach you why it's happening. I'm here to teach you why it's happening for you. It's not because I have a spe anything special here. It's the way you let it happen. The movement of the idea. Maybe bring that over there a little bit. Like a soul. Back up in here. Remember, I say the knife never touches the canvas. I hope I'm doing that slow enough for you. It's the paint that touches the canvas and pulls itself off. Like so, a little up in here. 
little up in there, a little up in there, a little down. Okay, let's take the second value of that, the lighter value, and do the same thing. Bringing that in, in and around some sunshine, letting some of that other color show through. Look at the breaks, look how we can layer that paint. Layer the paint because one paint's pulling from the other. One paint is pulling from the other, like so. And get excited. When you get those breaks like this, and it's a, it's a natural for you. It's a natural for you. Okay? It's a natural for you. So, move it in there, like so. Let it break. And a little more highlight up in here on this side. Da -da -da. Let it sing, let it dance, let it dance. Like so. Now, now I think, you know, once you get the keys to mastering that technique, you can put your any color mountains, any color anything. Okay, let's take that dark mix I had you make and add some sap green. About one part sap green to about one half part of the dark. Okay, load that brush. Come up in here and we're going to put some trees, lightly touching the brush, lightly touching the brush. Lightly touching the brush, move it in, move it in. Okay, let's get it in. Let's put it in there. Remember, it takes dark to create light, so I'll start with putting my darks in first. I'm not going to concentrate too much on down here because we're going to get uh, some nice movement and color anyway. But the lessons I wanted you to learn today in this particular painting was the use of that fan brush, the use of your tint, the use of color. And once you can learn, like that palette knife, like I showed you, you're going to get it all to happen with you. Let the paint and the knife do the work for you. Okay, bring a little of this in. Now let's just make some sort of painting out of this. The lesson was good. Was that helpful for you today? That's good? Okay, let's put a little more dark down in here. Highlights, so we'll put some highlights in. Take a color, any color, pick up some yellow, maybe a touch of green, and some white. Loosen up a little bit with the magic. Come up in here, highlight, 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 highlight. Remember, the dark underneath was thick, 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 thick. The highlights I'm using is a lot thinner because I'm thinning it down with a little bit of magic white. So there's an automatic pull. That's why you have to have a thick paint when you first start with this. Thick, thick, thick. The thin is pulling from the thick. You work in two consistencies. Two consistencies. You can't do it with one consistency. A little more movement up in here. A little more movement up in there. Just play some things. Just play some things. Okay. You seeing the advantage I'm giving you? Look at this. Thickers underneath. The magic white has a, the highlights has a little magic white in it. And it's pulling for me. Bring something up in through here. It's pulling for me. Maybe a little something up in there. Down into shadow. Down into shadow. Load the brush. Look at the paint I have on that brush. Load it. Load it. Okay, light touch. Let one paint pull from the other. One paint pull from the other, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Light, of course, is coming from the right. A little something up in there. Dun -dun. Okay. Move it in, a little something right up in here. Bring in a little more movement up in through there. Down and through there, a little bit. Look at this color. Look at how I'm playing this color. A little yellow, touch red. <gasps> but the key is the magic, the magic white. Let it pull and get those automatic pulls when you use it like that. A little something up in there. Okay, I want you to take some magic white, 
put it on your palette, maybe a touch of that red mix. Mix it in a little bit, like so. Loose paint. Okay, bring it up in here. Let's bring a few little tree lines up in through there, back and through in here before we finish the bottom of that off. But look at the knife. There's a lot of pressure going on. Loose paint, a lot of pressure, and it's moving off of my knife. Off of my knife. The magic. Okay, slice it in there. A little here, a little there. Now, when I'm teaching you these things, you know, the more you see, the more you're going to learn. Take maybe two or three paintings and make a composition of your own. You know, start with a composition that, that I do, but then like say, oh, I can see that mountain in a certain different setting or maybe with a big lake or small trees or whatever. Remember, use your imagination. Your imagination is your own and no one else has your imagination. You're unique. Unique. Look how I pulled some of that reflection down in, okay? Because this is going to be a reflection of water. Pull it across. Light touch. Light touch. Just want to show a little movement down in here. We're not too hung up on this part today. We got some of the techniques that we needed to learn. A lot of my students, a lot of people when I'm doing demonstrations will ask me those things. Show me more about the knife. Show me more about the fan brush. And that's what we did. Okay, look how I'm getting a load of paint. Loosen it up with the magic white. Okay, again, the thick paint. Look at the natural pull of that. Natural pull back into shadow. You know, the Alexander wet on wet technique was designed to get just exactly what you're seeing there. Okay? Exactly what you're seeing there. You're seeing a thick paint, a wet on wet, thin is pulling from the thick, a little more up and through there, down and through here, a little movement up in here. Look at, the, look at that. Tap it in quickly. I like it so. Take that knife with that little bit of magic white and touch of yellow. Bring it in like so. And there we got it. Well, I hope I was able to help you today. Learn some of the keys to mastering this technique. And I'll see you out there when we're selling our wares. Thank you very much. I've sure had a good time. Bye now.